What's up everybody? Welcome back to Swanky Disc Golf. Today, we are counting down the top five discs that beginners should probably avoid. As we jump into it, I of course wanna say, throw whatever you want. Throw what makes you happy. Uh, some of these are ideas that aren't gonna work for everybody, but if you're a beginner who wants to improve their game and maybe avoid some discs that could hinder good improvement to the game, uh, then this video is for you. These are just ideas. Let us know your ideas and tips for beginners in the comments below. Let's jump into it at number five. Now I am going to talk about some specific discs, but this is really five categories of discs that you will find and that I personally see beginners struggling with all the time. Uh, and the first one is going to be overstable drivers. Now, of course, everyone, if you're an experienced disc golfer, you're saying, of course, they shouldn't be throwing overstable drivers. You shouldn't be throwing drivers at all. But here's the thing, I see it all the time. I see kids ages eight to 12 throwing overstable, like destroyers. I see beginners who just joined the sport, who they wanted to get quick distance, and they pick themselves up a destroyer, and they throw this chopping forehand because that is actually a quick hack. Uh, that is a quick hack to get distance fast is to, if you're a beginner and you're just learning the sport and you're not able to hit that 250, 300 foot mark, throwing a chopping Anheuser forehand destroyer is gonna get you there. You're gonna throw farther than probably any other shot if you have not learned a proper technique yet. The issue comes in is that that is hindering you from learning so many important lessons like throwing S-shaped flights, which is where you're going to get actually the most distance out of any throw, is when you're able to throw something on hyzer, watch it flip up and turn and then come back at the end. So especially, it's also going to really impact your ability to throw flat forehands and hyzer forehands. It's not a bad shot to have in the bag. Honestly, it's an important shot for everyone to learn. Pros throw it all the time, amateurs throw it all the time. A lot of people have a disc in their bag designated specifically for throwing on a chopping anhyzer. But if that is your primary distance tool, it is really holding you back, especially from even just learning how to throw distance backhand shots. Uh, and we're talking any drivers, even fairways. I see people pick up the Firebird, see people pick up either like an Instinct, a T-Bird, a Cookie, uh, whatever they need to get that chopping Anheuser distance. It's really holding people back. And like I said, I see kids very young, just starting off disc golf and they only throw destroyers pretty much. And it's like, just because they can get that extra distance. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, but if you rely on that and you're not learning these other things along the way, it can really hinder you. Just as a reminder, if you're still looking for Christmas gifts for disc golfers or if you're a beginner disc golfer uh, looking for some really cool apparel, we want to seriously recommend to you FlippyDiscGolf.com. They have incredible athletic wear that is designed for disc golfers, uh, especially for the winter months. They have everything you need. They got hoodies and sweatshirts. They have windbreakers, they have gloves, they have hats. They have you covered for all of your winter disc golf needs. Also your summer disc golf needs if you're in the South. And like I said, if you're looking for a gift for someone, this is a great place to start. And then you can also get custom jerseys with no minimum order. It is an awesome gift. Uh, the disc golfer in your life will love it. That disc golfer might be you, uh, you'll love it. So yeah, be sure to check out Flippy Disc Golf com and you can use our code stay swanky for 10 percent off huge thank you to flippy disc golf for sponsoring this video the category for number four sort of has an asterisk around it but we are recommending beginners avoid really expensive or tour series discs if you don't know a tour series disc is a disc with a professional disc golfer's name on it and they're great because they support that disc golfer but they are typically five to ten dollars extra per disc because that chunk of money goes towards the disc golfer that is supporting. If you are a beginner and you found a favorite pro disc golfer and you want to support them, please go buy their signature series discs. Nothing wrong with that. They're usually made of more premium plastics and will last a very long time. But if you're just getting into disc golf, I find a lot of people picking up these really expensive discs and then those discs end up on a desk somewhere never to be thrown uh, and they wasted a whole bunch of money because they just got into disc golf and didn't know if they would like it or not. Like this is a Tim Barhand Buzz SS. This is a little older one, but Discraft always comes out with their tour series discs. Every company does. Uh, and I believe I got this for $25 and you can traditionally find a Z Buzz SS for $15, 10 to $15, 10 bucks if you find it used somewhere. This Paul Macbeth Hades, which this is his like own line of discs. But if you find this at a played again sport somewhere, it's probably gonna be $35. Uh, even when they 
first came out and weren't super rare because companies tend to jack up the prices of these really cool looking discs that have people like Paul McBeth's name on them. Again, great for supporting Paul, go do it. But if you're a beginner and you're just starting to figure out whether or not you even like disc golf, I would recommend saving the five to $10 a disc and just get one that doesn't have a professional disc golfer's name on it, even though they do look really cool. Piggybacking off of that, uh, moving on to number three, we have really, really cheap discs. And it, by really, really cheap discs, I mean off-brand, weird, I call them like retail store discs, things like Franklin discs. I don't even know if they still make these, uh, but if you like go to Walmart or your local superstore, they might have a set of like flying disc sport discs and it looks like a disc golf starter set and it's like $8 for three discs and you're like, oh, that's a really, that's a really good deal. You'll pick up these discs and the, the, uh, disc golfers will throw them and sometimes they're so understable that even beginner disc golfers have a hard time throwing them. Sometimes they break with the very first tree that they hit. I'm going to say avoid going to Walmart. Walmart sometimes has Innova starter sets or like Dix will have dynamic disc starter sets. Those are okay. But if you see the ones that have like a really weird off-brand name and they're not exclusively saying disc golf because they don't even know what disc golf is, avoid those even though they're super cheap and maybe an easy entry into the sport. It's not going to really show you what a disc flies like. And number two, this might be a kind of controversial pick and you guys can let us know, of course, what you think. Let us know if you disagree in the comments below, but we were talking about it and something we see pretty often in beginner disc golf is people picking up putting putters that the professionals are using and recommending for good reason, uh, but they're typically very overstable and very low glide. And what this does for somebody who is brand new to disc golf is have them putting way out right and watching it hyzer fade into like the right side of the chains. And while similarly to a hacking forehand, that is a shot you can learn and is probably important to learn to get around obstacles and stuff. Uh, it causes people to miss right like crazy and it's never going to be as consistent as putting a disc right into the heart of the chains. I'm not gonna name too many like specific discs, but anywhere you see discs that are like zero two stability or they have like a one or a two glide, um, putting putters like that typically are more overstable and they are good for the long term. They're much more resistant to the wind. They're a little bit more point and shoot, uh, but that takes a lot of practice, getting that wrist snap. Like watching Eagle McMahon, uh, he puts with Rainmakers now, but I think he used to putt with P2s where it's just like little wrist snap and he's whipping the thing like 60 feet uh, into the change. That comes with a lot of practice and developing, I don't know if it's a muscle or what, but developing that wrist snap is not easy to do. Uh, and I think it's a little bit better for somebody to learn on a maybe a little bit more glidey, a little bit more understable putting putter and practice trying to nail the heart of the chains instead of letting it float out right and cave down into the chain. And then when you're like, man, I'm really getting some power out of this and I'm like going over the basket or the wind is messing with the disc too much, then move on to things like the PA3, the Wizard, the P2 fantastic putters but sometimes like i said when you're learning on these and you're missing right a ton it might be because you're overcompensating in your mind for the over stability and you think i need to put this to the right of the basket and then you miss right so yeah let us know what you think about that one that one was just something we've seen a lot we see people missing right with overstable putters all the time um so yeah, that's number two. All right, now we're jumping into number one, but I wanna remind you guys that it is Discmas. We are giving away 25 discs to 25 different subscribers over this period. You have 25 chances to win. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, go to the Google form below. And today's disc is actually gonna play into our number one. It is slightly field tested, um, but it's only been thrown a handful of times. And that is this Z Sparkle Ledge Stone Scorch. This is an absolutely sick disc and it's today's giveaway disc. The number one disc that I believe beginners should avoid is actually these understable distance drivers. Um, this being said, there are different levels of beginners. We have uh, lists on this video that are like top five uh, beginner distance drivers. And what we really mean by that is like top five first distance drivers. If you've been playing for six months to a year and you're like, okay, I've worked my way up to distance drivers, I'm ready for my first distance driver. I would still consider that in the realm of beginner disc golf, and that's why we make those videos. Um, but if you are genuinely, purely starting out in disc golf, you just started this week, or you're looking to buy your very first few discs, some people will say, oh, just buy a really understable disc. 
and they go out and they buy something like the Scorch or the Paradigm or things like that. Um, and they think that, okay, now if I throw a Scorch, it'll be the same flight that Paul McBeth gets off of a Force. Uh, and they find out that that's not exactly what that means and it can be very discouraging because even though it's understable, it being a distance driver in 11, 12, 13 speed means that you still have to get that disc up to speed for it to get those flight characteristics out of the numbers. And for that reason, we're saying you should probably just avoid understable distance drivers until you are ready for them. So yeah, understability is not the only factor to consider with your beginner disc. So again, yeah, please drop down some tips, some ideas for beginners in the comments below, like the video, subscribe to the channel, enter the giveaway, and we will see you tomorrow for another day of discmas. Stay swanky. We, we, we wish you a merry discmas. We wish you a merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy